Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry this video took so long to get out to you. I wanted it to be done about two or three days ago, but it took a long time, an exorbitant amount of time, to paint two brood mothers and 16 giant rats. However, I've finished. I've now painted chapter one for you guys, so you guys can see that. In future videos, I'll be doing it chapter by chapter or encounter by encounter or whatever makes sense in the final video. But this will be the only thumbnail that spoils it because we all know about the brood mother and the giant rats. In the future, you're just going to see the mystery box on the thumbnail and you can click on that when you are good and ready to start painting the next encounter or chapter or again, however that works out. As a huge shout out, I want to give my huge thanks to my supporters over at Patreon. Without their support, I would not be able to do everything that I do here for sure, especially when it comes to just not relying on the industry and being independent of all that. So I'm sending out many of these miniatures out to them as just a small thank you. Now, real quick, before we get into the actual video, one quick announcement. This is kind of the last time to hit that subscribe button so that you're notified of my next video when it does go up. It will be the Osworn giveaway where you'll get the miniatures box plus Osworn for free just for being here. I'll be uploading that video. However, I have no idea how YouTube will like push that video out to you guys or even if it will because it is kind of a different video. So if you want to make sure that you see that, Again, be sure to hit subscribe and click that bell icon so that YouTube actually lets you know when that video is out. But it should be later this week, so be on the lookout for it. Alright guys, that's all I had. Let's get started. Okay, to start out, I want to show you guys some of the artwork that I'm basing this off of. There's two main pieces of artwork when it comes to the Broodmother. And they're very, they're styled differently in their lighting. So this one is kind of bright and kind of this kind of purple, pink, uh, just kind of a more red-hued, warmer-colored version of the brood mother here. And I'm going to take some of this, especially kind of like the wounds there that are like nice and, and, and gross looking. But in the game, this is actually what she looks like when you pull out her card. This is uh, kind of what you see in the game when you're playing it. It's got the bones down there. It's got uh, this kind of blue nighttime look to it. Um, it's kind of blue purple tint and that's really what I'm going to paint most of the fur based off of and I'm not going to use Steve over there. I don't know who that <laughs> that's a funny looking rat. So all the other rats will look good. I don't uh, he's like an imposter. I don't even think he's a rat. <laughs> okay, so starting out, let's go to Warlock purple base color for these kind of boils, these wounds, this necrosis looking kind of nastiness on her. Um, th this is just a, a very typical color I use for any kind of wounds um, or even like innards like guts or something like that. If somebody has like their intestines splayed out in different games or whatever, I'll, I'll typically throw this on them and then put like a red wash on it make it really disgusting and gross, add some blood. Um, speaking of which, we're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff at the end. At the end of this video is when we I'm going to bring out vomit. Yes, vomit. I'm going to bring out blood. It's it's going to be awesome. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, I love doing that end part. For this, it's it's almost just paint by numbers. It's all indented really well. The texture is good. It's not too rough on your brush or anything like that. So it's not making a bubble or anything crazy. It's it's uh there's just a lot of them. Like you're going to want to look on the insides of the arms and near the rats. So the the rats on the top are kind of covering some of it up a little bit. And uh, yeah, just. Take your time and paint it. Now, when when you paint the fur, you can touch up some parts, so you don't have to be too careful. Like it, it's it's gonna be alright. This is a light color; you can paint over it easily. All right, now I'm gonna get my monster brush out, but I kind of didn't wash it after I used it last, so it ended up like this. And I kept this in just because I wanted to show you what I do when I'm lazy and find out that I did this. Um, I don't remember what I painted last with the monster brush, but. I'm going to get some of that, link in the description below, and look, it's better. Yeah, that stuff is awesome, I uh, highly recommend it. So again, link in the description below to that, as well as really just this, this brush, which I think is kind of required for these larger miniatures. It's the monster brush, it's pretty big. We're using Caliban Green, it's this very, very rich, dark green, a very good base color green. Uh, you can actually still darken it a bit, uh, not really with a wash, but if you added some black to it, it could get pretty darn dark. Uh, but it's just dark enough. It highlights really well, though. Um, I have it a little watered down, uh, so it, it did need uh, two coats. If I hadn't watered it down, it probably would have needed one. But uh, just because of all the skulls, and the skulls are going to be a little bit lighter color, I still wanted to be a little careful, um, just because touching that up with the screaming skull I put on later is kind of a kind of a hassle. Um, it, it's okay if it's 
you know, on there a little bit, but I, I didn't want it to be terrible if I got it there where it's just a glob of paint or something like that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cheat with these smaller uh, <laughs> resin miniatures here. Uh, so these, I can actually take them off and paint. Uh, if I did have to paint the other ones that are attached to it, and you just, you know, you just shove your brush under there and, and kind of hope and pray for the best. It's a dark color, so as long as you're covering up the, the gray or the, the plastic or the primer or whatever, that's fine. Here, it's kind of interesting. So if you notice on that corner down there, I didn't get enough primer. When you don't paint with a primer and it's not a color that can go on as a primer, this is what you get. It just does not stick. It actually does a little bit. So what I did is I, I just did a couple layers of it and it covers more and more each time so it's sticking to the paint that's already laid down there. Um, it's possible to just take some extra effort. All right, so now I just have green skin and a big dry brush, and I'm just kind of plopping this on pretty heavy. I'm doing a heavy application. It's not a lot brighter. It's a little bit brighter, and this is going to be kind of the main difference there. And then I'm going to add a, a, a super highlight, one of my favorite highlights. Can't wait to show you guys it. it it's so awesome with green. Highlights so well. This is a very kind of natural highlight um, without a, a lot of like really stark contrast, which is what we need to pump it up with. Um, but th these these colors go great. So Caliban green and then green skin looks awesome together as you can see I think so I love highlighted green I don't know why and dry brushing is just fun anyway, and you can kind of go to town with it I mean you're still just dry brush it's not a whole lot of green you're gonna cover up any colors anyway It's nothing nothing too terrible. It's not like this is gonna be a color that's hard to deal with again on the bases I'm cheating here. I used a smaller dry brush on the other ones But this shows you better what it is I'm doing so that's why I've kind of chose this footage versus you know a, a regular one that you'll get with the game All right now we're gonna swap gears go to the caribou crimson uh, This is kind of funny every time I see this and I see that it's actually kind of this like pink purple But when it's it's stacked right when it pulls together That's kind of what these shades are for right it gets into the recesses and as it stacks it darkens up Right as it as it kind of thickens and there's more to it, but uh, otherwise it's just kind of a barely a tint at all, if anything, on this warlock purple because they're almost the same color technically, which is kind of great. I think it works really well, and as you can see, it's already looking kind of gross. Okay, all right, hemp rope is my kind of edge highlight. I love using hemp rope on as a green highlight. It's like this green, yellow, bright green kind of. It's just an interesting color. And it just looks so good highlighted on these kind of edges there. You get that little bit of yellow tint to it, but it's still in the green. I, it's it's great. So again, I have my smaller dry brush out. Uh, I'll again a link to the most wanted set. I, I live and breathe by these brushes, and so if you're looking for a brush set to get, you get this. Uh, you know, my, essentially every brush I use minus a monster brush uh, is is in that link. So that's that's really nice. As you can see, it just, it goes so well. A, a fairly heavy brush, but I don't, I, I spread the love around a little bit. As, as you can see, sometimes it'll leave a, a big mark, but then it just kind of spreads around as I keep uh, moving the brush. So I don't reload the dry brush uh, very often at all. And it just gives this really great kind of contrasty look to it. Switching gears to something a lot darker though, we're going burnt red in the uh, in the mouth I could have done dark red and dark red is really good too I think it's dark red let me see real quick black red black red by Vallejo is also a great inside mouth color um, the, the reason I went with the slightly lighter burnt red that it's a little bit more obviously red and you know not quite as dark is because first of all the mouth is really open and so I felt maybe a little bit more lights going in there. I also wanted to use the color for the gum line and that seems a bit more natural and because she's going to be this kind of blue gray green looking uh, miniature uh, I really wanted these wounds and the like open mouths to really stand out and be scary and something you notice and so picking a warm color like a, a very big red versus just kind of a dark color that lets it blend in, in the background I felt would just look a little bit better um, and so that's kind of why I went that way but you could certainly do it darker I wouldn't do it black that's that's silly nobody's mouth is black inside but uh, you could you can certainly darken it up and you could throw like nolan oil on it or something like that too for the tongue, I'm doing Dark Vermilion. This is kind of interesting, and I'm going to keep my mistakes in here just so I can talk through um, how I worked through solving the, the issues I had. So originally, again, I wanted this kind of um, red bit to it. Normally, I would paint the... Um, I would actually pretty much use the Warlock Purple to paint the tongue and have it this kind of purpley, reddish 
um, you know, fleshy looking thing. But I wanted the tongues to be fairly red, uh, just so it, it popped out more and it was a little bit more stylized. Uh, because again, I, I wanted that kind of snarling face to just be a, a real big um, selling point on it, something you really noticed. So th then I got the Caribou Crimson out again. Uh, if you're painting this after me, feel free to paint the base color of the mouth. Um, right after the necrosis part patches on her so that you can just get the Caribou Crimson out once. I didn't learn from my mistakes. <laughs> It'll speed it up a little bit more. And then on all of these rats, of course. Okay, while that dries, I'm switching to the light green blue. Now this is interesting. I was talking to, um, I think it was one of my patrons. Uh, no, it was just, uh, well, I think one of the, uh, the, the viewers. Uh, maybe it was painter two, or, uh, patron two. I forget who. There, there's a few people I was talking to to this too just recently about how the hardest part with these miniatures especially when you're trying to match concept art is trying to have that end goal in mind so this is not something you would naturally go like oh i want that to be that dark blue color i'm going to paint it this light blue green color as a base coat um, but you have to kind of think about what the base coat is and then what the wash is going to look on top of that and then what the highlight is going to look on top of that or any other technique that you might do so this is just the base coat that then I'm going to do a colored wash on, and that's going to really shift the color a lot, especially the light. The lighter the color, the more the wash is actually going to shift the color of it. Uh, it does also depend on the um, how different the uh, wash is, of course. But as you can see, I got the monster brush out. Um, I would hate to do this with any brush that's smaller than this. It takes forever. And then, uh, you know, just kind of leave a space so you're not making a mess. Uh, because you do already have a wash on that necrosis. So and then I get my regiment brush out again from the most wanted set and uh, just kind of being a little bit more careful around the, the edges everywhere. Just, just, you know, just so I'm not having as much touch up. It, you, you can, I mean, you, you can just kind of go to town, do touch up at the very end, but I, I hate the touch up phase if it's long. I don't want to spend an hour getting all my colors out and, you know, oh, I got a little spot here and a little spot there. I'm just, I try to be careful the first time around where it makes sense. Um, so here, again, I'm just showing you this is totally how you'd paint it if it's on there, um, but I am going to cheat, so fair warning there. I'm going to take them off and paint the bottom. It's not really necessary, though. Um, I painted the other ones after this, and you can't really see under there. I mean, it's it's fine, but I'm going to anyway. See, the, the primer didn't even go on there, and you'll notice this sticks a little bit better. Part of it's because the surface area is different, so it just pools in there, and then the other part is, is just because different paints will cover different on unprimed plastic. Lava orange out, don't do this. Well, I guess you can if you want. I didn't like this. But anytime I don't like what I'm seeing, I keep going with it. Because sometimes by the time you highlight it up, by the time you add a wash, it ends up where it's like, okay, it just looked bad right beforehand. Kind of like right before you finish a Rubik's Cube, um, where you know it'll look like it's all messed up, but it's right at the finish, and a few more moves, and then it's finally finished. Same kind of thing. I always go all the way in, see if I like it at the very end. I didn't, even after putting the wash on. So I've got my Warlock Purple out, and I'm going to build up a highlight on this. I'm not going to show you all the layers, but I just kind of keep building it up, and then I'm going to actually highlight it up a little bit too. And then it, it actually ended up, I think, really nice. I really like it. It's got this like really deep, dark red... Um, you know, texture to it and the creases and the shadows. Here I'm just adding some white to the Warlock Purple. It's not actually painting white. Again, just to build up those highlights. Um, because I do want this to be a very focal point of the miniature. Uh, it's just, it's, it's such a cool thing. Uh, a, a, a cool pose to have all the teeth out and, and the huge tongue there and everything. So, I, again, it ended up well, but that's kind of how I deal with it. I typically keep going and finish what I started to see if I like it. I thin my paints so it's not like I'm adding a whole lot of layers here. It still has all the texture and everything, and it's just fine. All right, now I'm going to take that same highlight. This is the Warlock Purple with the white, and I'm actually just kind of manually tracing over the like ripples and texture of this kind of necrosis part of it, um, or these kind of gaping wounds. Uh, so uh, sometimes, depending on how much the wash darkens or just how much you want to bump the contrast, many times you'll go back to the base color. So you'll base color, wash, base color again, and then highlight. 
And sometimes you'll do what I'm doing here where it's base color wash and then highlight and you skip that kind of intermediate base. Notice there's not a lot of surface area here that I'm highlighting. So there's no real chance for me to build up a highlight where it's base color and then a little bit less coverage of the highlight. So I'm just going straight to the highlight, pumping up that coverage. I have a plan for all of this at the end. I'm going to do several things to it to make it look disgusting and gross and awesome and so uh, I already have that in mind too so I really want the contrast up high here in fact higher than I would normally want it because I'm going to be adding some stuff over top of it and and again you, you don't have to be exact you can be pretty quick there I also went and very lightly I barely have any of my brush I damped it off on a, on a paper towel or a napkin and then I'm very lightly uh, touching the like it barely even bends the bristles kind of thing just in here just giving that texture a little bit of a little bit of love. Okay, we're almost ready for the wash, but I need to paint the noses first. I did dark sea blue on this. Dark sea blue is one of my favorite colors anyway. I don't get to use it enough. It's an interesting color. Um, it's in the same kind of blue-green spectrum as the fur, which is good. It'll kind of blend in. Um, but you need to do this before you add the wash so that um, when it gets the wash with the same, it, it'll just kind of be tinted all, all the same. But again, this is a darker color, so it's not going to tint as much. Alright, so now we have Drakenhof Nightshade. This is the blue wash. You can use any blue wash you want. And I got the kind of the monster brush out again, and I'm just going to go to town and cover all of this. Um, it, it, this kind of stuff with the big surface area, I got two brood mothers I'm painting, I got a ton of rats I'm painting, it, it's, it's, it's a pain. There are 30 rats on her back by the way, which means with, between the two brood mothers, it's 60 rats, not including the separate rats that I'm also painting. This, this was brutalistic days. Like, not this step, but just painting in general. It, more time than I'd ever spent uh, painting it for a single video by far. <laughs> it was quite the task. Uh, if you're just doing the chapter though, it's I believe 12 uh, giant rats and one brood mother. It's not terrible. And then you have the whole the whole thing painted, which is nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a pretty liberal coat here. Now, what you could do if you don't like how blue this is, I kind of like the slightly cartoony bright look that the blue gives. You could do like a Drushi Violet or any kind of purple wash. It would give you a similar color sense of this kind of dark nighttime cool color scheme. Um, but it'd be a little bit darker with that purple. Um, I, I, I think blue looks a little bit more natural than purple. Um, but depending on how you highlighted it up and, and just how you applied it and whatnot, I think that could still work as well. I flip-flopped when I was designing or planning this painting if I was going to do a purple wash or a blue wash. I ended up with a blue and I'm happy with it, um, but it, it could be personal taste as well. And again, I guess you could paint it like the uh, the first picture I showed too in that kind of more pink uh, and, and orange scheme, a little bit warmer. Okay, so now we just have the light green blue again, big dry brush. And we're just going to town on all of this textured fur. Uh, again, you don't have to be too careful here. I'm doing a dry brush all the way around, not a specific highlight, though you certainly can. If so, you would, you know, highlight the top of that leg more than the bottom of the leg. But I, really, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm spending enough time on this, and I think it looks good enough with a general highlight. I'm, I'm fine not having a specific you know, 45 degree light source or, or something like that. What I just did there with my finger, by the way, I do often. It ends up, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna ruin it again because I decided I'm gonna highlight it anyway. Um, but that's my initial reaction. Anytime I get a, a little bit of paint on somewhere I don't want, I normally stick my, my finger in there and try and soak it up. And a lot of times it works. It depends on if you can get your finger in it where you messed up and, and whatnot. But more often than not, it, it picks up a lot of the paint, puts it on your finger, and then you don't have to, uh, like, it. If if I didn't want to highlight it anyway, and I wanted that to be the base color, I wouldn't have had to touch it up because it, it fixed it. Smaller dry brush for the smaller rats. Um, again, especially with this one, you do not need to dry brush the bottom. It should be shadowed and darker anyway, so there's no reason to lift this up regardless. You just kind of pop it in there. You can see, though, the contrast there is awesome. I really like the contrast this added. Okay, now for the bones. I'm doing Drake Tooth. It's a little bit of a wider... Um, uh, or a little bit of a lighter skeleton kind of bone color, but it's still very much in that kind of yellow bone. Uh, I could have gone even wider, and I was tempted to at first. If you look at the uh, 
the concept art. It's a very bleached bone white kind of look. I'm gonna highlight it up, but again, I did want that kind of yellow tone to it versus white, mainly because I thought that would stick out maybe too much. I didn't necessarily want really bright white uh, bleached bone there. Uh, it would draw too much attention to itself, and that's not really what I want. I want the, the attention to go to the the rat. I want you to look at it and be like, oh, that's a cool rat. Oh, and look, there's bones. Not, oh, whoa, look at those bones that are super bright on that green base. And then, oh, look, there's a rat there too. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I kept it in this color range, but you can certainly go brighter to match the concept art a little bit closer if you want. Uh, just doing a basic flesh wash on this. It's kind of a, a light brown uh, sepia uh, flesh tone or, or whatever the, the Citadel version would work just as well too. Now this I am going right back to the Drake Tooth. Um, so this is to the base color and then I'll highlight it again a little bit brighter and you don't have to be very detailed about this I mean you just kind of pop it on there you just drag it over the face and on the top of the skull and you're good You're just kind of making it to where it's in between the bones and the eye sockets that that that's kind of a uh, uh, the washes okay added a little bit of white to that make it a little bit brighter uh, I think this is a happy uh, compromise between the concept art and what I want out of the, the the miniature itself. So I was really happy with how that turned out. Okay, now this is further, I think, blends the two together. I have Katie and Flesh Tone out, and I'm doing this for the skin, uh, and that, that includes like the tails, the arms, the feet, and, and, and really this helps, I think, just accentuate that, first of all, this is just the, the brood mother. It really sells that, but it, it also, um, while it works with the miniature, again, I think this is closer to what the color scheme looked like in that first picture of the brood mother, that kind of more earth tone, orangey kind of look to her versus that nighttime look that you're going to see necessarily in the game. But it still works in that one too. If you go back and look at that um, darker concept art that you see on her encounter card, um, it, the the skin is you know a color like this, just slightly tinted for the nighttime look that that that, that art piece has. You're going to be careful here, by the way. So I'm using my regiment brush again. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want to, especially painting like this, you definitely don't want to get a big blotch of that on the uh, fur. I did a few times. Again, you can always touch it up, but it's a little hard, especially with a wash, because when you add the wash again, unless you're very careful with the way you apply the wash, it's going to pull over the other wash and create these tight marks, these lines where you can see the difference. So tails, hands, Inside the ears, uh, there's a lot of those, so we're going to be doing some some of that. And then, of course, her giant tail we're going to have to do as well. Alright, and again, just on the little guys as well, same thing, in the ears, on the feet. You can see their feet a lot more, and you'll notice on the sculpt that there's like a, a kind of a, a tuft where the hair starts and the skin stops, or the skin starts and the hair stops, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, and so you just kind of paint up to there, see like on the back leg, you can tell kind of where it is. And then paint the tail and you're done.
All right, so now we're adding flesh wash to this. Again, learn from my mistakes. If you're following this as a painting guide, feel free to do the bone plus this and then add flesh wash to both at the same time so you're not having to get it out twice like I did. Um, again, I think that's one of the benefits of planning. I try to plan it out as smart as I can because I don't like to keep re-getting a color out. I want to paint everything that has the flesh wash and then paint that on, um, but I... I got a little carried away on those bones, I guess, here, so it, it's it's whatever. Um, we are almost done. We are on the home stretch. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but they're, they're definitely mostly painted when it comes to uh, surface area. So now it's just kind of adding the, the details and finishing these up. Speaking of which, I jumped to basic flesh tone for a highlight. Uh, over the Cadian flesh tone, this is a huge jump, uh, which means it adds a very good highlight. Uh, pumps up that contrast, but you do want to be pretty light on it uh, You don't want to be too heavy on the dry brush or it'll look terrible and you don't necessarily want that but uh, You know for like these tails and the rats. There's not a whole lot of texture there I mean there is and you kind of get that texture when when you're uh, uh, You know painting it but on like here on the on this tail There's a huge amount of texture and you can see how that pops out by adding that basic flesh tone really sells that texture a lot. Um, I, I didn't mention this before, but this is a prototype miniature. It's not the final version. Um, it's glued on the base a little wrong even, so like you, it'll be connected to the base a little bit better for you guys when you get it. Um, but in general, it should be pretty, pretty close to this. All right, this this is one of my favorite parts, so it takes forever. So Dorn Yellow is an edge color from uh, Games Workshop from Citadel, and it's this really bright yellow. The edge colors are essentially one of their normal color yellows with a lot of white added to it. I like it though, it's pre-mixed. It's a fantastic highlight to a yellow, especially if you go from like Avalon Sunset all the way to Dorn Yellow. Oh man, you get some like flash glitz yellow in there in the middle. Um, that's a fantastic yellow highlight scheme of like kind of two highlight levels. Uh, for this though, I just wanted their eyes to be almost glowing. You look at the concept art and you think about it, these are kind of like reflecting the light or whatever that, that is going in there. And so you, they just have these beady yellow, bright, bright yellow eyes that I think look really cool. Now the teeth, the teeth have to be yellow. The, the teeth cannot be clean. You look at the concept art, you can tell their teeth are disgusting. They have not flossed or seen the dentist. Their regular cleaning schedule is way out of whack. Uh, I, I, I doubt they even floss. I mean, it's, it's bad. And so, uh, these teeth are growing out all sorts of different ways. They're disgusting. They're different shapes and sizes and they're beige. <laughs> so, and we're going to make this grosser. Uh, this is just the base color. Uh, but again, I want this to be the highlight of the miniature. This is where I want to see for the rats. Um, they don't have nearly as much tooth texture as the brood mother, but what I really wanted from there is to sell their kind of snarling mouths. Uh, I think now that we have the nose, now that we have the eyes and the ears, painting their little teeth there, even the hint of teeth that some of them have, um, just kind of sells the whole, you know, a whole bunch of angry rats on top of her too. And of course, we've got to get this guy too. Sorry for the fuzzy image. Every now and then, I I uh, didn't focus too well, but uh, you, you can see what I'm doing here. This they have a little bit better teeth on their own too. Okay, so we got strong tone out. This is essentially Agrax Earthshade. If you're using Citadel paints or paint colors with their their fancy trademark names, uh, this is just a dark brown. And again, it's it's to darken it up to pump up that contrast and to make it look dirty and disgusting. I don't want these to be clean. I don't want them to look great. They shouldn't. That's part of the whole point. And it's it's fun to paint gross stuff, I find, because you can just go to town with it. Like there's there's no amount of too much I could have done here, I felt. Uh, even if a pool to make almost like a black tooth, that would have been awesome. Like there's there's no harm no harm done there. Okay, uh so the big uh, bases here have a little arrow to show the front. To hide that in, I'm painting it like a rock. So I'm doing uniform gray as a base coat, and then I'll I'll uh, wash it and dry brush it. And you, you'll see. I think it, I think it ends up being really well. Okay, one final bone color here: screaming skull. This is actually pretty close to the Drake tooth. Um, it's it's actually a little bit dark, a little bit more yellow, um, which is perfect because especially this is going to go on the tail as well, and I want that. To, I don't want it to look super weird. I want it to kind of blend in well. So with the wash and the highlights, I think it, it blends into the tail color 
quite well. Um, I will say you could use Drake Tooth on this. Anytime you're painting a miniature, the more colors you use, the better. So for instance, if you have one brown, and so everything brown is that one color, it works. But it doesn't quite look as good. It's not something you notice. Like people aren't going to be here and be like, oh, you use two different bone colors. Um, but the fact that I did use two different bone colors kind of just adds to the visual complexity of it that your eye can appreciate even if you're not thinking about it. So you just look at it, it looks a little bit more natural. Yeah, I used several different brown washes, not the same brown wash, a couple different uh, bone colors, stuff like that. Again, just um, I, I, I helps sell the miniature as a little bit more believable in my mind. I always try to do that. Um, but if, if you don't have all the paints, that's fine. You could just use one bone color, screaming skull and all of it. What it would be 99% the same. Um, I think it's just that almost subconscious visual complexity that you get a little bit of that believability that, hey, these bones are separate from her bones. Okay, speaking of Screaming Skull, let's go ahead and put that on here as well. Again, pump up that highlight. So instead of the beige, we're getting this kind of um, brighter highlight on the teeth and uh, just to, again, make it really, really gross. Uh, by all means, don't highlight the bottom of it so it's just brown pooled right where it meets the gum. It's disgusting. Dark tone is essentially non oil. It's a black wash, and I'm putting that on the stone. Uh, there's not a whole lot of texture there, but it just adds a little bit as it pools in the brush marks, if nothing else. And then on the screaming school. Now, this is scary. Yeah, you don't want to go fast. You don't want any tide marks. Uh, but I went with a dirty look. Again, I wanted it to kind of blend in. I don't even highlight it all that much. Um, but you can, by all means, use a uh, brown wash if you don't want that. Ash gray is my highlight. This is, I think, what finishes the kind of look minus what I'm going to do for the basing on that stone. And then we're back up to Screaming Skull. I don't want to get super bright, so I'm just going back to base color. But we put a very dark wash on this. And like most, most of the time, when you use a black wash, especially on something with surface area that isn't uh, like the fur there, um, it makes it look dirty. Again. That's what I was going for here. I wanted it to be this kind of, it's on her tail. She uses it as a weapon. Um, speaking of which, when painting these, I highly suggest if you're going to spoil it anyway, um, look at their moves because you can paint those moves into it. So for instance, I know she has a tail swipe, so I'm fine with her tail being kind of dirty and nasty. She uses that as a weapon to attack different things. So it's not going to be super clean or anything like that. In fact, I thought about putting blood on it, but... I, I I didn't I decided I didn't really like how that was gonna look. Um, I'm also highlighting the nose back up as well, real quick. This is just the same uh, blue green with some white added to it. So I I anyway, uh, like like so she she does these different attacks. Um, uh, later on, when I get the vomit out, it's because she does like these spit attacks and these kind of other kind of gross uh, kind of you know just nasty acid spit kind of stuff and so I wanted to kind of incorporate that again into the painting scheme just looked a little bit more believable and so really that's just you know um, my piece of advice that's that's what I plan on doing I plan on looking at their cards and seeing if there's ways I can incorporate their skill set their move sets into the painting now normally I do a dark gray uh, almost always on the rim but on this one I wanted to use the green I think it'll blend up really well now, for basing, you don't have to base. It has a textured base. I thought adding this summer overgrowth, again, link in the description below to the Army Painter stuff there. This stuff is essentially kind of, it looks kind of like broccoli, um, but it's perfect for overgrown forests like this. Like, this was made for the deep wood. I plan on using this a lot on a lot of these bases because um, it just looks so good on the board. It adds a little bit more um, depth and a little bit more, again, visual complexity to the base. Uh, so you can just see all these different things that are on it and that it's, 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 I wanted it to look dense. And so this is step one of that. I'm going to be doing a few things to the base here. By the way, the fact that I'm basing means we're just about done. We're just on the home stretch here, which is good. And uh, on, I, th I imagine people do this differently. A lot of people use a toothpick or something like that, or even a paintbrush to apply the glue. I tend just to grab this stuff. It stays together pretty okay, and then just dab it in the glue. I find it quicker, and then it's a little bit more exact. Um, I've, I've tried it the other way, and every now and then I don't I don't paint enough or the right. Uh, and, and then this is another trick I do. I'll get a little toothpick, and I'll put it underneath if a piece is sticking up that I don't want. And so I do that, clean it off real quick, and then I'm going to just press it down. So I added a little bit of glue where it was sticking up where I didn't want it. 
All right, next up we have some moss green, and that's going to go on, kind of on the base, also on the rock and stuff like that. Uh, this is, a lot of people will use this for like grass or something like this, but um, with it being splotchy like this, it just adds again to kind of the texture of the base, adds a, adds a little bit more things to look at and take in uh, with the eye, and I, I think it looks really good, especially because I'm going to mix it with another one here soon. But yeah, just haphazardly place this here. I'm doing the pre-glue treatment because what you do is you, you put the glue down, you take it over, typically over a bowl. I was lazy and didn't get a bowl, so I didn't catch a whole lot of it. And then you sprinkle it on where you want it to stick. And it'll stick where the glue is, and then you tap it off, and all the excess will go away. It'll only be where the glue is. So you can see I added a little bit of that to the rock. It makes it look really good. It looks kind of like this moss growth on it, but still usable in the game. All right, next up I have Grass Green. It's just a brighter green. In fact, it even has a little bits of kind of a, a green yellow into it. And uh, j just so it's not all the same, it kind of pops out a little bit more. Kind of like the Summer Growth I used too. I used some darker ones, I used some lighter ones, some more yellowy ones, some more green brown ones. Uh, just, just to make it look like the deep wood. So again, uh, now that it's just this, I just put you know the glue everywhere and then just went to town pouring this over all of it. And so it's all going to stick on where it needs to be and fall off where it doesn't. Again, just kind of tap it. And you can tap it pretty hard. I mean, it's it's th this stuff is little and it sticks really well to the glue, so there's no real harm there. Okay, and now we have the vomit out. This is after I have um, done my varnish. So because I'm going to be sitting these out, they're a little bit less matte than I would like. Normally I'd use Tester's Dole Coat to be super matte because I don't like it to look shiny and painted. However, I wanted these to kind of survive shipping, and so I did a gloss and then a matte on top of it. And I've, I've, I've found it's never quite as matte after that, so there's still a little bit of shininess. However, you don't want to do a matte varnish over something like Vomit or Blood, because it'll it'll dole out the shininess that you want. I have found that these tentacle paints stick very well, they don't really chip off, so I've, I've never had an issue with that coming off after painting, even though it's not varnished. Uh, it's almost like adding a varnish, but anyway, this Vomit color from Vallejo, it looks like snot. It's disgusting. Uh, you can you can make it really thin, and it gets like semi-transparent. It's a great color. Um, you can pull it. That's what I'm doing here, making it like dripping out of it. Like this stuff is oozing. It's just disgusting. Um, and I think this really, really fits her uh, her uh, uh, cards and her play style. Like this makes sense when you start fighting her. And I think it actually for players who don't know yet. So as a painter, you kind of have to spoil it yourself. Um, but when, when you bring this out, you're like this is it. They're gonna be like, oh, that's disgusting. She's disgusting. And when she starts spitting crap at you and and doing you know gross stuff like that they're gonna be like oh this makes sense you know it, it kind of hints at what's to come and i think it adds a lot of character to it makes it a little bit unique uh it's not something you see in the image but you know that's okay uh this is blood for the blood god uh you can get i think it's a glimmering blood from army painter any of these blood ones that you can do um you want the fresh blood some of them make dry blood because it's a little bit brighter red a little bit more shiny um, and I'm just adding that into her mouth because again, I want that the focal point. I want it to be gross. Adding some to her claw, like like she's you know been swiping at people or something like that. Again, you could have added it to the tail, like some splatter, but uh, I didn't really want to do that. Um, that and again, I wanted I wanted the focus to kind of be in her head area. So getting that claw and her teeth and mouth, I think, added a little bit more. You can have splotches. You can have um, splatter. You can have drippings. Um, you can you do all sorts of stuff. So I'll, I'm showing you kind of in detail mostly what I did. I skip a few points here, but in, in general you can kind of see 
my method to it. One thing I will caution against is you can do too much. You can do too much blood very quickly. It's why I work slow. It's why I'm just kind of slightly, you can tell I'm just adding little bits here and there because you can just plop this on and it, it just looks kind of silly at that point. I mean, I mean, it, it, if, if, if you want a whole bunch of blood, go for it. I mean, you paint your miniature how you want to, but it's very often where you can go to town on the blood. Now, I will also say the vomit and the blood you can use to cover up stuff. And so you can use it to, um, especially on those wounds, to like blend parts that are, are still obvious where the wash stopped or you got a little dry brush on it. It's covered in vomit or covered in blood or something like that. And it works really well as, as kind of a oopsie fix. It's kind of like an eraser. <laughs> but again, if you messed up everywhere and you're just covered in blood everywhere, it, it can look kind of silly. So I even put like drippings on her tongue like it's coming off the top of her mouth. I don't know if I showed putting it on the top of her mouth, but I did. And now this is the final step I'm doing with this. I just have a little bit here, and you can see my brush is pretty flayed out. This is why I keep old brushes like this. I use this brush for uh, stuff like paint and vomit and gloss varnish and stuff like that. And so it's really ruined, and which means it's perfect for applications like this. Just dabbing it here, it's shifting it a little bit more red. But what it's really doing is, you can still see a lot of that warlock purple underneath, but it's adding again that shiny glimmer, that little bit of kind of like pussy blood look to it. It's disgusting. It's great. Um, it, it, something I highly recommend doing just because I think it really took it to the next level. And again, so see, there's that finger fix. Look, done. Done. Got a little bit on there. Right away. Got it on my finger. Good to go. Um, it, it, it adds to that contrast, right? So now this is a little bit more red to the little bit more blue. It makes it super noticeable in the miniature, even from far away, even on the table. Looks great. Now, as I said, I'm sending these out. So, we're gonna send it out. So, you know, uh, th this is this is always kind of fun to do, just be just because uh, half the time I, I need to be like, wait, where do these people live? <laughs> um, so, on my Patreon, I normally require a um, address, and that's because I tend to send stuff out. And so, every now and then, when I can, I don't do it all the time, but just to kind of show thanks or whatever, uh, I'll kind of put a random number generator, and then uh, the based off the number, I'll go from the top of my list to the bottom that I made, and. And, you know, pick the person that uh, that was on it. And so, Jason O, you won the Broodmother. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. I don't know if you're backing uh, Osworn or not. I can't remember. I don't think you've ever mentioned that you are. In which case, you might just have a cool rat mini now that's painted. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can sell on eBay for like 12 bucks or something. I don't know. I don't know how much <laughs> one by me would be worse with, with, with your name on it. But, uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, and it was from King of Average. Okay, so next I have these four resin ones. It's not a full set of the rat brood. It's just kind of this separate resin one. And so this one is to Andrew. So Andrew, congrats. You got the, uh, the, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce your, your, your last name, by the way. Sorry, Andrew. But the moment it starts with a J, I think I'm lost. <laughs> um, anyway, you got these, these four kind of resin rat miniatures. I think they're pretty cool. Hope you like them. All right, and then I have a full set of kind of these 3D printed uh, rats. This is everything you'd need for the chapter one, you know, for the giant rats. And that is to Kevin Wax. So congrats, Kevin, to that. You just got yourself 12 giant rats. Uh, I don't know if you play D&D. &D, I don't know if you'd use them for that. I don't know if you're getting no sworn. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoy those. I'll be sending those out in the coming days. So looking forward to that. Here is the final... And here is the final miniature. This is how she looks. I think it's great. Again, I love how the base turned out. I think it looks super overgrown and awesome, but it didn't cover up anything. I think the arrow looks good and hidden. Like you don't just instantly look at, oh, there's a, there's a, a, a triangle arrow on the base. No, it just kind of looks a little bit like a rock. Uh, I think the necrosis looks good. All the rats on top, I think, blend really well. I really like that some of them have their mouths open, some of them don't. I think that ends up selling it quite well. Uh, the tail with the bones there, I think, look good. This was just, it was a fun mini to paint. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this took a long, long time. I had painted two of these, plus 16 rats. Um, just the rats on top of the two broodmothers are 60, so it was a lot. But in the end, I had a really fun time doing it. They're really great sculpts. Um, I wasn't fighting the sculpt at any time. All of it looked really good. Um, so I was really happy with how it turned out. And I think I nailed what I wanted to do with them 
uh, taking into account both of the concept arts that I've seen for it quite well. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy this, or if you found it useful, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like on the video, all that kind of stuff helps. Again, I'll be giving away a copy of Osorn to one of you guys. Uh, I wish I could do more, but just one in celebration of my 1 million views, so thanks for that. Subscribe to see that later on this week, and I'll talk to you soon.